as many of you know, I like to play the French defense. And against the exchange variation right here where he takes the pawn immediately, black recaptures, I have a very aggressive system that I like to play against this. And this game is a perfect exhibition of how dangerous this can be. So sometimes he'll play d4. I get my bishop out, and then we play a little mirror chess. And I put the knight out here, and this is the move that I really like that doesn't really get played much. Generally, people want to have the free c pawn, but I have something else in mind, and it involves castling on the queen side. You'll see. And I, I should say real quick, anytime the queen comes here, I mean, if you want to draw, you can play queen there, but I recommend knight here immediately. You just block. It's never an issue. White usually doesn't opt for that because white wants to have an advantage out of the opening and trading the queens off isn't much of an advantage. So he plays c3, just holding down the center, and we break the symmetry of the position. So now my pawn is behind the knight. His knight is not going to be able to develop to the typical square on c3. And in this position, I play knight to e7 and this is one of the key moves in this variation you always want to play your knight to e7 and not here because these pawns want to move also you want to hold down this square and also any checks are temporarily blocked my opponent castles and this is my variation I play my bishop to g4. It's a great square for it, and then you don't have to worry about what you're going to do with this bishop. Oftentimes in the French defense, it's not that good. And I think this square here, it restricts the knight, gives him something to worry about. It prompts him to play h3, and this is actually playing into my hand. Now, anytime I can prompt pawn moves on my opponent's king side, I'm happy because it gives me levers to attack with because I'm not going to be castling here. And he thinks he can get away with some pawn moves around his king, thinking, oh, well, he'll, he'll be safe. But he doesn't realize I will be castling queenside. Now, you don't force castling queenside. Um, there are ways white can play that will prevent you from doing it. But um, this is the default setup. He does prompt my bishop to move. And you just keep the pin. You play back. You'd be even more happy if he ended up playing g4. Then his bishop comes out here. Another common mistake you see in this opening. And I say it's a mistake because any time I can move these pawns with tempo, it's good. Um, but instead of taking, I mean, instead of playing f6 immediately, I decide not to, not to show my hand just yet. And I put the queen here on d7. Now, the queen almost always does end up on d7 in these variations where you're castling queen side, and it turns out to be a really good square for the queen because it's very safe, it keeps his pieces away from f5, and you'll see it can attack on the king side. And he plays rook to e1, a logical move, and I just simply play f6 here now. So suddenly he has to think because he was not expecting f6 he was expecting something like castles king side so he plays back and now this is a bad move for him it's blocking off his rook it's biting on granite as they say looking like a tall pawn and i simply castle queen side now perfect now in these variations you always want to be ready to play king to g8 and I say be ready to play it. it doesn't mean play it automatically see if you can get an attack going on the king's side you leave the king right there um, only if things get really spicy over here do you play, uh, move your king over and anytime you're worried about bishop skewers do that but in this position I've got a knight blocking it my queen is also there so we're good and he plays a very logical move before getting his attack going against my queen's side where the king is hiding. Um, now, I play my knight out. And this is, we're at a book here. Now, pretty much, 
up until this position. I've seen either this or very, very, very similar positions dozens of times, but I play something of a novelty here. And I like this move because it's tempting my opponent to make mistakes. Now, the, well, there are a few points to this. One point is, well, winning a bishop for the knight is good. My opponent can take the knight, and then I recapture with my queen, and my queen is centrally placed in a nice square where it's not immediately exploitable. This knight is pinned. Another reason I played my knight up here is because I want to have a free square for this knight should my opponent play b5. And then I'll probably take a bishop or something, then get my other knight here and continue operations, eventually push my pawns. The opponent actually made a mistake. They played a4. Now, this looks pretty smart considering that it's a very good attack. This pawn is going to be weak. This knight can be kicked. But it, the problem is it's too slow. And I immediately play what I consider to be a very good move. Now, the computers, they call it an inaccuracy. It's not a blunder. It's not a mistake. They say it's an inaccuracy because apparently g5 was best. And I did consider this idea, but I figured that we're going to both have attacks going on at the same time, and it's going to get very random. And I felt like I could do something a little bit better. And I exploit this pin, and I'll bet you if I let the computers sit on this position for a while, they'll begin to like black more and more. So I'm exploiting this pin, and in the event of bishop back, well... He's wasted some time with his bishop. I'm going to get his good attacking bishop away from the king side, or the queen side where the king is. So I felt like this here was decent for black. But my opponent kept going on with the attack, and this was actually the biggest blunder of the game. So it turns out my move had a lot more venom to it than my opponent anticipated, and I simply played knight takes knight. Now you'll see here that after the knight takes, the pawn has to recapture, which opens up the king to my queen. So my, my opponent played relatively quickly, just assuming his attack would be roughly equally quick to mine. But because my opening is so efficient, my attack was already launched before he could even establish his forces. So, what ended up happening in the game was I take, he took with the pawn, queen takes, and he resigns. Black wins. Let's go ahead and check to see how many times this opening has come up in the database. So the moves were e4, knight f3, d5, e takes, e takes, d4, so right here, this has been played thousands of times. I play bishop d6, bishop d3, then I put my knight here, he pushes his pawn. And this position has come about 247 times, according to the master database. I play my knight out, he castles... I play bishop here, and now here the main line is to play the rook over, but my opponent played this, and out of the 33 times this has been played, black wins 45% of the time, which is very good. White only wins 18.2, the rest being draws. Have a good one.